Hey, how's it going? Great to see you. If you haven't been here before, my name's Tim, and on this channel we do a whole pile of film geeky, technical, creator, YouTube-y kind of stuff, and a bit of photography as well. Today I want to show you a plugin that I've just got for Photoshop. It's called Dehancer Pro, and I first came across this plugin as a, as a film plugin in DaVinci Resolve, and they've since created a version of it for Photoshop and Lightroom and I want to show you that tonight and and basically just a quick overview of what it can do and what it does and why it's a bit different to other film stock emulators. So here's a photo in Photoshop that I took recently it's just got a few candles in it I chose candles in particular because I'm going to use the candlelight to show you some of the features in Dehancer later on. But for now, let's just open the plugin up. The plugin just installs, by the way, like any other plugin in Photoshop. It's a double clicker. You just choose Dehancer and Dehancer Film from the Filters menu. And it loads Dehancer up. And here you go, pulls in the photo I've got on the desktop. I'll just turn Preview off so you can see what the original photo looks like. And down the side here... It's got all the different film stocks that it can emulate. You can filter those down up here if you want to, um, or you can just choose one from a drop down if you know which one you're after once you get to learn this thing. But anyway, I'm just going to uh, turn the preview on and you can see how it uh, runs an effect of that particular film stock onto your photo. We've all sort of had a look at these film stocks in the past, either physically or digitally, and um, quite often, um, I mean, there's nothing right or wrong about any of them. A lot of them just come down to artistic preference. But anyway, you can uh, work your way down this and when you're working with a particular image or a particular scene or something like that, you can usually find something that fits the mood that you're after, which is far more important than whether it's an accurate representation of a, an old film stock. Oh, there's some, some really good monochrome ones in here as well, sort of um, old monochrome film stocks that, are, that you just can't find and certainly can't play with as easily as a lot of these. I, I kind of like some of these um, Konica ones, so I'm just going to pick one of these out here. That gives a nice richness in the in the wood tones as well as showing me the candles. It doesn't oversaturate or desaturate the background too much, uh, and it doesn't cr it darkens things without completely crushing the shadow. So I like that. That's a good starting point for me to work from. So that's how you can um, start with picking a film stock that you want to work with as a base here. Now you can do a whole heap of other stuff with this as well. We've got these um, source controls, we've got expansion controls, we've got print controls that emulate the film printing process. Then we've got a film grain generator that I want to go into in a wee bit. Um, we've got some color head information in here as well that we'll go through. And then there's these two great things that we've got in here, which is the halation and bloom sections and finally the vignette so we'll go through all of these just really quickly now color temperature is a fairly obvious one we all know what that does if you you can warm it up or cool it down basically and you just uh, use that to adjust for the color temperature of ambient light in the room uh, tint compensation once again you might have some color spill if you've got a big green wall or a large object of particular color or something in the room you can compensate for the tint of that sort of thing and recover whites back or something or you can use it to slightly colorize a, a bit of footage if you want to a photo if you want to defringing can get rid of uh, some of the well fringing uh, fringing if you don't know what that is is just where you get um, little artifacts coming around the edges of high contrast but so if you de turn the defringing right down and right up you're not actually gonna see much in here i can't really show you that one on this but the tools are available for those who know what it is for the expansion we can um, increase or decrease the black point bias so i can make the black point a lot more intense or if it find it's crushing it or taking it too dark i can just very slightly if you talk to dehancer they'll tell you just use all of these controls very subtly that's not really designed to go full tilt or one way or the other although of course you can do that if you want to um the the stuff's there the options there if you really want to bring something up but for something like this you might want to um just i um, don't know i might just want to knock a little bit so i can recover a little bit of um dark in here and the opposite of that of course is the white point if you've got stuff that's blowing out a little bit or is too heavy on the top tone top colors 
or something once again you can do that and just um, help even out your photo and get the ambience you want so that's how the expand sort of stuff works there's a color mode thing here so you can expand it based on luma or just based on um on what normal pixel pixel coloration so it will affect things in the luminosity so if i bring down the white point in the luminosity area you can see it's going to affect the the image slightly differently now we get to the point which is, starts to get really cool um, which is emulating the print process now you can choose the type of uh, print process that you want to work with so whether it's going to glossy paper or film or you can send it to a cine and film log kind of thing as well for uh, if you want um, to be able to color correct this later in other software so in here you can set the exposure that you're using during the print process this is how how heavily you're exposing the film onto the paper uh, we've got the tonal contrast here so once again the, these are th things that emulate the physical printing of a photograph it's how much light you throw at it um, it's how long you throw the light at it if you've worked with the um, actual physical film processing you, some of these controls will emulate some of the things you can do by leaving stuff in the bath for longer leaving the light exposing it longer having the light brighter or darker that sort of thing once again in saturation as well um, is, is a bit of a tweak on it um, and that can be based on what sort of chemicals you use in a print process but these are all tools that are here and available to you just to tweak the photo to get it to how you want it and um, how, how you might manipulate that now film grain in Dehancer is something that's quite special because we're in a lot of tools the film grain is an overlay that's put on top of the image what Dehancer does is it actually rebuilds the image using grain so it doesn't overlay grain onto it it creates grain in the image or it creates the image from a grain it, it, it's a lot smarter so it is based on the input data rather than just stamping some sort of grain over the top of it once again it's a it's a very very subtle grain thing if i turn that on and off you can see the difference and it's a very subtle softening of the um of the image if you want to make it a heavier grain you can do that and what i'm going to do is i'm just going to ramp that up ridiculously so that you can really see it coming in and um, you can see how the grain is different in different tonal areas like it would be on a real photograph if you've got a coarse grain um, film or something so uh, this is how it would actually look if you had a really nasty grainy film but once again Dehancer say just use these things very subtly to get a little bit of effect that you that you want to get to get a nostalgic feel it's not about creating some sort of filmic look or any of that pretentiousness it's it's about creating a feel for the image that reminds people of something that they've seen in the past or a, a feel of a film that you might want them to recollect subconsciously or something like that or just it's that whole nostalgia sells things and use the film grain but use it subtly and have a play around with it and have a think about how you want people to feel when they see the image now the color head here um, this lets you um, sort of tint in the different um, color ranges here so the yellow to blue range you can put more yellow in or more blue in um, below that we've got a green magenta cross range so it's a little bit more than just a, your normal color wheel and changing overlaying a color temperature have, have a bit of a play with something like this and, and see how it works for you one, once again it's a tool that's available and once again just for fine adjustment of things so you can use it to warm things up and cool them down and tint them if you need to and um, it just does a little bit more of counter correction as you're making your correction so that you're not impacting the photograph in ways that you don't intend to halation and bloom are two things in the um, film processing process that people don't often think about now halation let's start a look at that that's where you get a halo that's where the word comes from is where you get a halo being created around a light point so this is why i use these candles in particular so now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to blow this up by sort of taking the amplifier smoothness and diffusion and a few things all the way up and now you can see what the halation is doing is it's actually creating this halo around everything if i turn down the impact which is where you can control the overall effect on the image you can see that that creates that glowing halo around everything that's a bright light point 
so what I can do is bring that down a little bit now by default uh, because of the lens on the phone that I've been using I'm getting a bit of halation around there naturally anyway but if I want to create more of a halo and more of a glow to soften this up and give it a bit more of a, a, a Christmassy feel or a a bit of a feel like like old film would without trying to say the word film it i can just bring those up a wee bit more and it just softens it maybe it's a more romantic glow maybe it's uh it, it, it's something you want to use to just create an emotional effect once again you, you you don't want to go and start looking really tacky but if you just want to to create an emotive effect that um, might remind somebody of an old film that they saw and anyway so that that's what the the halation does is it literally creates a, a halo of light around high contrast areas it's also doing it up around and the way it works is because sometimes you don't get your film flat onto the photo paper and there's a little bit of an air gap and if you've got that little bit of an air gap on there light spills out particularly the more intense light where you've got the the bright candlelight or the bright yellow of the dewalt box at the background there and um that's where you get that little bit of light spill and the brighter that light is the more of a halo it creates as it comes through the film and spreads onto the print paper that's where the halation comes from and where the effect and that's the physical filmmaking process that the effect is copying bloom is a, a kind of a little bit like halation but it's actually blooming out now it, it's where you've got more light coming in than you really need to so if you have a look in these really bright areas so in the center of the candlelight here the bright yellow in the back of the dwarf box and i think even a little bit down on these filing folders i've got in the corner i really didn't frame this photo up too well but it was working for now you can see that around some of these edges the light might come in a little bit closer and it's actually blooming up a lot more so you've got that more intensity uh, or maybe the the um the film was a little bit overexposed or something like that so that's where it's actually bringing up those highlights now you can control how much effect that has by using all of the um, controls that we've got here so we've got the highlights control the details we've got the uh, source limiter how much diffusion is happening or not um, and how much you just want to amplify the entire effect as well which is actually a cool way of seeing where it's actually taking place so you don't miss it uh, in various bits of your footage as you can see here um, if it over blooms it starts going into that bluey purpley kind of color if you want to recover that in light sources you can just bring up that save lights thing you can desaturate the effect that the bloom's having as well so that it doesn't make too much of a mess of things once again use these things very subtly so in here i might want to amplify that up a little bit and just increase the bloom in the middle of my lights and then i want to save the white in the light so i'll just do that if I turn that off and on again you can just see a little bit of what that's doing in there that's not a lot it's a very subtle thing but that's how you want to use these things subtly and the final one of course is the vignette now this is where you might have a light source that you're using to expose your photo which doesn't cover the whole um, exposure area your whole film and paper evenly and you get that black fringing around the sides vignetting is basically where you have a hot spot in your exposure camera as simple as that so you can also reverse it by the way and um, have a, a hot spot outside you can reverse the effect basically so if i hit vignette then what you can see is that actually darkens around the edges so you can um, just throw this all the way out to show you how much exposure you're throwing in there whether you're over or under exposing you can choose to feather that if i take the feather all the way down to nothing so that there's no softening on it you can see where the edge of the exposure is if i reduce the exposure on the outside then i can choose how dark i want the edges to go to and then i can start softening that off once again here's the tool it's a it's a good one to use it's a, a way of emulating another process it's really good for creating a focus on a particular point which is why you would hot spot your exposure in the first place it doesn't have a few controls that you might find in other vignette tools In other vignette tools sometimes you can move around on the picture where the center of the vignette is that's not available in here i'm hoping that dehancer do sort of add a couple of these transformation type things on the effects in here they do have an aspect ratio but they don't have the recentering so i can't sort of move the hotspot the vignette area 
across so that the candles are centered in it and that's just a bit of a pity at the moment though you know it's not a huge deal you can still get the same sort of effect you want here or there are other vignette tools available and that goes the uh, same with a lot of these things it would be nice um, and I'd, I imagine that eventually we'll see masking coming into these and that sort of thing as well when you're finished you can just drop out of that and it applies your um, effect and changes and everything to your photo in Photoshop and you're done if you decide that you want to back out of that by the way you can just jump back it does uh, just create a new version in the history as you would expect in photoshop and you're away laughing anyway i hope this has been useful and uh, go out and grab yourself a copy of the answer there's a link in the description below to where you can go get it they're awesome people and it's a it's still a fairly young product and but they're making a lot of really great changes to this really quickly and i'm really looking forward to a version of this final cut pro coming soon i hope that's something that they've said they've got coming and i'm really really looking forward to that one anyway have a great day don't forget to click down here and subscribe watch this video watch this video leave comments down below i will answer them and i'll see you in another video soon that wasn't painting my breath for the last 20 seconds <laughs>